Hi YouTube, it's Sean Y and Richard, and we're back and back again because we just did 30 minutes of video and a storm just went through, knocked out the power, and I didn't save anything, so we are starting over. You're saying it for the first time, but this is round two for us. So. We're going to continue on is the pre- uh, Trib rapture biblical and see in our last video we talked about uh, mentioning the trumpets which we are going to get to just probably not this video um sorry i know a couple people wanted us to talk more on that and we're going to but we're going to take this a little a different direction right at first and get into paul's writings in uh first corinthians 15 uh, well, yeah, you go ahead. You keep going. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you want to start a fish. All right. Well, right. I, I set up something before we got into. Uh, okay. He's going to start in Ephesians. Sorry. Right. And we're going to get into uh, the things Paul was revealed uh, to um, by God. So let's get into that. All right. Good intro again. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. So I'm praying right now, and that uh, we can uh, kind of go. We had a pretty good, I thought we did a pretty good job, and uh, apparently somebody else did too. So all of our words were wiped out, and we're just praying that we can uh, duplicate again what we just did. And, and I know the Lord be with us. So in our previous videos, and uh, a lot of people, I want to I want to stress some points about the Apostle Paul to the apostle of the gentiles that he was revealed mysteries if you watch some of our previous videos i pointed out some things today i want to i'm going to read it out of ephesians chapter 3 that i think a lot of people are really missing the point about the rapture that this was a secret hidden in god not revealed to anyone except the apostle paul directly to the body of christ it's dealing with the body of christ and as for today, there's no, no Jew, no Gentile, no Greek, no God, no free, no slave. We are all one body of Christ. Not the nation of Israel exalted, but right now. But he was given some mysteries, secrets. And I'm going to read this to you. because I'm not going to talk because it's very important. We read some of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which is where everybody goes. And I did that on purpose. I did it for a reason. Because uh, people, they run to that verse as if those are the only scriptures that provide us a, a good, a good in, instruction on the rapture or the catching up. But, I, but first I want you to understand where God's coming from to you. Let's just read it. Ephes I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles... See, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, me, to you. You were the body of Christ. It was given, he gave it to the Apostle Paul to give to the body. Okay, that's what he just said. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words. Whereby, when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. God is giving us things right here, these words right here, to let us know that he gave the Apostle Paul secrets, mysteries, to give to us. And in that way, now they're recorded in, in, in eternal, God's Word. So let's keep reading. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Spirit is who revealed to Paul, okay, or Jesus Christ himself, actually, that the Gentiles, this is a mystery, by the way, this one here, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ. Next word, by the gospel, not by anything else. The gospel of Jesus Christ is what brings you into this body right here. 
not by any water baptism, not by anything else. The gospel is what brings you into this. And we did a video on that too. Yeah. Called "What Is the Gospel?" Two-part video. So um, I'll put a link in the description box so you can check that out too. Okay. I'm going to keep reading. I'll, like I said, this isn't my words. I just want you to see what it says. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. And that's what the Holy Spirit did for Him, and that's what He wants to do for you and I. He wants to effectually work in each one of us. Okay, that's what He wants out of the body. As we're placed into the body, however we're placed, by the gifts given to us, He wants to effectually work in each one of us, by the way. So, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, <laughs> I'm going to, Sean, you're going to have to do that same illustration. I really like that. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that that word, unsearchable. Unsearchable. That's, that's basically undetectable. So Untraceable. Alex, untraceable. Undetectable. So what it's saying is in the back, in the front of this book, the Old Testament, you're not going to be able to find what he's anything about what he's been revealing. Amen. He's going to verify that in the, in the next verses here. A lot of people debate that, but let's look at what, what he says next. And to make all men see. God wants us to see. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. He says that all the way through Paul's writings. I would not have you be ignorant, brother. He said, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world, or the age, hath been hid in God. Key scriptures right there, not hidden secretly in the Old Testament. The words that Paul was giving to us, to the body, were never revealed. We re and if you look at another previous video we did, it said that the princes of this era, which is the devils and the demons, had no knowledge of these things. For had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. They did not know. They couldn't know. Okay, but then he goes on to say, Who created all things by Jesus Christ? We just look at the words and believe them. These things were hid in God. Go back, and they were revealed unto Apostle Paul first. And uh, I could go to more, but this, this is a rapture video. I set this up to emphasize the rapture was a, another mystery in God that was revealed to the Apostle Paul. We're going to associate that with, I keep getting a few comments, most of the comments out here are wonderful, by the way. I can't thank the people enough that are opening their books and seeing this with their own eyes, not by what I'm saying. They're trusting God, they're trusting the Holy Spirit for truth. A couple people they are running back to Matthew 24. And we're going to discuss that and praise, we, we will pray that people will be revealed that Matthew 24 is not dealing with being raised up into glory, living with Christ in the air forever. This is re, this is all about destruction. And, and this, I'll say this again, that uh, I've been doing some looking into people that are talking about the the rapture and when it happens and you know there's Chris White um, you know he, he believes in somehow what he calls a pre wrath trib but that's that's true but he's putting that in mid tribulation so mm -hmm. he's saying the whole tribulation is not wrath which we're getting into that you got people like these disinfo agents like Alex Jones and Mark Dice if you listen to what they say, they get mad with hatred. They say they're Christians, but they get mad and hateful when you bring up this topic. And they say it's a cop-out. And they bring up Matthew 24. Right. And we're going to discuss that in a minute. And um, <clears throat> But back to why I set this up. <sighs> I'm going to keep reading. I didn't read this in the first one. I'm, I'm looking at it, and I go, and I did mention this previously in another video, but I think it's worth repeating. It says, been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known 
by the church. As God revealed these to the Apostle Paul, he says, then he says, as you read, so therefore is eternally written his word, we may know the mysteries and the principalities and powers of the air, the angels even, I could show you in Hebrew, or I think it's Hebrews, it might be Peter, that the angels did not know this. They're watching the body of Christ and how we react to the first off the grace of God, this incredible grace of forgiveness that we have, and then all the other mysteries that he that he's real. They didn't know any of these things. And unfortunately, we can read these things, and half the and 99% of the body of Christ is rejecting every one of them. They're trying to place themselves in Christ's earthly ministry. They're trying to be Jews. They're trying to be under the law. They're trying to mix the two together. How sad is that? But, you know, there's people that I'll say these things and they'll just, they'll swell up in anger. They really can't understand that we are, we are not the Jews and, and we're not Israel. And they can't comprehend that in a way that they, they want to put us Gentiles in that Old Testament under the law when it was clearly for the Jews. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish these because these are such wonderful verses that help change my life. And then, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm like debating whether we should go ahead and save. This well, if you think, think we I should, think, I think, I think we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> we say that, so this does it again. We might have to do this later, but we'll see. According, it goes, excuse, manifold wisdom of God. It's that might be named known by the church. The church is the body of Christ. We hear these things. We believe them. And it calls it the manifold wisdom of God. You ought to look at the word manifold. That's a that's another big word that we should look at. I don't want. It's not about manifold wisdom. It's about rapture. According to the eternal purpose, which He purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. We That's our position today. And in Hebrews makes it even better uh, description to the Jews, which the Gentiles knew nothing about the the blood of goats and all that. And it says we have a, we can access the holiest of holies, which is the Lord himself today. This is the language that uh, the Apostle Paul gives us. We have access with boldness and confidence. Not only that we're eternally saved, but we're also going to not face His wrath. Okay, that's where death with our rapture is about. And I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians. I, I set this up for a reason. To emphasize that there's the Apostle Paul. You look at uh, Romans 11.25 and then Colossians, I believe, chapter 1. Uh, it, it, there's, these are just few. This is not about mysteries. We'll do a whole video on the Paul mystery, Pauli mysteries. But today, I just still want to set up that these things were not made known unto the sons of men, but now through Paul, they were hidden God. That's the purpose I brought you here. Now let's go read First Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to start at verse 51, because the reason I went to Thessalonians, what I always see. When people are against the rapture, they preach against it. They run from this scripture here. They run to Thessalonians because they feel like they've got wiggle room, I think, that they can twist scripture around to make it look like there's an apostasy going on. The church body must fall away from the truth first. A big falling away. We're going to dispel that in another video. Uh, the, the truth has never been held on to by very many people, by the way from the time of Apostle Paul up until today. That's the, the apostasy, a, a big falling away from the church, the truth, is, is, is a, a silly, silly belief system. Because I'll tell you right now, 90% 90, 90 of the Christians out there don't even know the gospel. That's how bad apostasy is right now. They don't even know the simple gospel message. And that's a fact. So the apostasy was done happen, it says in Thessalonians, for the mystery of iniquity doth already begin. And I, well, that's not the subject here, but Sean's going to read 1 Corinthians. We'll begin at 1551. Go ahead. All right. And it says 
You know, this is Paul says, Behold, I shew, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep and die, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Why don't you go ahead and read 54 also, because that's, and then we'll just stop there, because that's a really powerful verse. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. What, you know, that there, these are such powerful verses, but why I brought you here, why I, came, I brought you to Ephesians chapter 3, the things that I've studied out, and I pray that all of you, Bereans, open your Bibles up, and don't let people dictate what you read. If you, if you trust a good teacher, and we mentioned it before, if you don't go to God's instructions for understanding the Word of God, and that's first, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, where it says, Study to show thyself a workman approved unto God, not being ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Pray about what that means. And, and Ephesians is a wonderful book because in Ephesians chapter 2, it gives you the answer to that. He talks about time past, but now, which is where we're at now, and ages to come. All of that is in chapter 2 in Ephesians, and I pray you go read those things. Most people deny the ages to come. They, they deny that there's a, a dealing with Israel again. Well, they, they need to go read Hebrews chapter 6, and look what Apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrew people. There is, again, it talks about the ages to come. So we, we know that there's an ages to come. That's the whole book of Revelation. The ages to come, the thousand year reign of Christ. That's being denied out there by most of Christians. Uh, but either way, the reason I came here says, Behold, I show you a mystery. One of the mysteries that was revealed to Paul. I didn't write this down. I'm, I'm just reading what it says. And I, like I said, we'll do a whole video on the mysteries that was revealed to Paul, to the body of Christ, and to everybody in the whole human race. Again, he shows you mystery, and there's a, and there's a reason I brought you here also. We shall not all die. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it clearly says it is appointed once for man to die. Now we have God telling us we shall not all die. Now, that's not a contradiction in the Bible, as people might point out. That's not a contradiction. This is a secret that was hidden in God. Now we are not all going to die, some of us in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And Sean was going to mention something about it. He forgot. No, I didn't forget. I okay, go well, Okay. Yeah, the, you know, I always like to bring that up. That it's, you know, when people talk about that twinkle in an eye, you know, a lot of people refer to that as a blink and I just think it's pretty interesting that it's actually there's been some you know talk or study done that it's actually how fast light actually goes into your eye and reflects off your eye and basically it's the speed of light it's that quick so yeah, it's it's light passing through a, your a eye blink and a twinkle are right. two different things so. so you think about that a little bit and that's a kind of like I said as I studied as a Catholic I started thinking about that that's kind of scary I mean, you know, you start thinking, is this going to be painful? I don't think so. But uh, now we go back to First Thessalonians, where everybody wants to go run a debate. And we're going to get into that real heavily. We look at, need to look at Second Thessalonians. Uh, excuse me, yeah, chapter, or is it First Thessalonians chapter 1? We're going to get into those verses. But right now, I want to bring out the mystery, a secret. Most people will reject this. They'll read it. I've had people look at me and tell me right to my face, Paul was never given a mystery. Paul, Paul received no mystery, I, even though I just read it. I read Ephesians chapter 3 to them. They will look at me and say, that Paul never did it, got anything more than what Christ revealed in his earthly ministry. So I can't break the chains of that. That's people rejecting God's word, and I can't do anything about that. 
uh, uh, these people we, we all love we love the Lord that's the common common theme that we have we don't want to go to hell yet most people would adhere to their teachings and not what it says and that's okay uh, that's at your own risk but please don't call me and Sean uh, teaching doctrines of devils and so or, or get out of jail free card so that's why you're calling the Bible a doctrine of devils, because if you're saying that, because we're just reading what exactly what it says. Well, what in turn they do is they try to grab all the promises that Israel received, and you go read Ephesians chapter 1, it dispels all that. We were without the covenants of Israel, with the commonwealth of Israel. We had no covenants. We had no promises. We had no hope. But then God, in the next words, it says, but now. But now. But when? when Apostle Paul revealed them to us, to the Gentile world. Not when the veil was torn in uh, Matthew, uh, when the, that, that didn't supernaturally give everybody an understanding of grace in the world. That's, there's a lot of cute songs out there that say these things, and that's where everybody believes. Somehow the veil was torn, everybody's brought under grace. Well, <laughs> God used men to preach, and that's in 1 Corinthians, the, the foolishness of preaching. That that's how he brought it to people. There was not a supernatural understanding of the the veil being torn and the, the enmity between Jew and Gentile was automatically gone away with. And I tell you, that's what most people believe. But either way, we're adding a little bit from the previous time. But as as the Lord leads, that's that's what I do. And we are not rehearsed, by the way. Uh, this is I just want to make that perfectly clear. We we come here with we pray. We do our best, and uh, we pray that people just open their books and read it for themselves. And, and as I repeat almost every video that I do, and I, I suggest everybody slow down. This isn't a race to see how many words I can read. This is a race to, for God revealing things in my life that I can live by and believe. So with that said, and we're going to go to Matthew 24. I mentioned the destruction and the, the, the old good old Tim LaHaye series of Left Behind, because that's a direct reference to Matthew 24. A, a direct reference to that. And everybody knows it, and they all love and, and, and I appreciate what he did. There's a, my cousin, Florida, never heard of the rapture. Man, good Catholic. I mean, my nephew. Never heard of it. Watched the series. I actually read the book. He didn't watch the series. But through that, through some work that, you know, may not be perfect, he, he learned about this concept of left behind somebody some people are being left behind some people take it but let's look at the language of matthew 24 by the way all of matthew 24 you go back to the first questions he's talking he, the, the disciples ask him about the temple how beautiful it was and, he, and the lord says all these things are coming down and not only that then they ask him they ask him these questions he says and sat up in the mount and said uh, did, 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 Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming. Well, the people that deny his coming, he's already there, so be careful of that. He is there. <laughs> he's talking to them. And I'm speaking to the, the Catholic pontiff that said there is no, there is no return of Jesus. And, uh, and the coming of the end of the world. There's three part questions. A lot of people say two. I, I, I don't understand that. It says three. He wanted to know the sign of these things. What is, when shall these things be? What will be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? Not the world. The world means age. Uh, right? In this context. So the context itself. And the Lord starts referring back to the Old Testament. He refers back to Daniel, 70th week. He refers back to the desolation of the abomination. He, then... He goes to verse 21, he's talking about there shall be great tribulation such as not was since the beginning of the world to this time, no shall it ever be. And he says, except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved out, excuse me, saved, but for the elect's sake, who are the elect? The body of Christ has not been formed yet. We haven't even, we're not even, we're not even in, in this picture at all until Apostle Paul reveals these things to the general world. So, he, who are the elect? He's talking to Israel. The elect of Israel, the, the remnant, 
the, the little flock is what is always referred to. But he says, those days shall be shortened. Now, I'm going to go all the way down to verse 36. Okay? And it says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving to marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came. Now, the people that try to associate the glory of the rapture, and I, I forgot to mention, I mentioned this in the first video, and I have to bring it up now. The word harpazo, the word caught up, has such a deep meaning. Now, I mentioned it in the last video. It means snatching up, but it also has a bigger meaning. I looked at it last night. I was praying about what we're going to do today, and I knew there was a deeper meaning behind the word harpazo. And I started looking into it, and it takes you all the way back to the Hebrew roots. Now, we just read how we're in a moment of twinkling eye. We're changed incorruptible. We are, we are taken from mortal to immortal, corruptible to incorruptible. That word harpazo means the exact same thing. Not only is it taken, snatched up, taken up, taken for oneself, it also, if you look deeper in the words, it's to glorify, magnify, honor, and also at the same time, forgive expiate of sin. So, and, and I want to mention Sean, he's going to put a link to his video. I was really proud of him. I was, uh, it, it's really tough. It, it, it's, it's amazing to watch what he does uh, because of our upbringing, we didn't have anything. But there's people struggle with their sin in the flesh. And he did a great video on that. I encourage you to watch that, that people are struggling. But uh, we are still sinners in the flesh, but our spirit and our soul is saved. Now, the, the, the rapture is when you receive your glorified body. We, if we die today and we get, kicked, get hit by lightning on the way home, now I'm not going to have a glorified body yet, but my soul is in, with the Lord. The spirit goes back to God. But I'm in heaven. But the, the rapture is the uni unifying of a soul and a new glorified body, Philippians 3. One fashion like unto his glorious body, Jesus. So that is what the rapture involves. You receiving a glorified, indestructible, uncorrupted body. The word apazo. Yeah, looked at it. Was just, and, and I challenge you all to do real deep. Don't just look at a few words. Keep tracing these roots back, and it takes you back to the Hebrew meaning of being exalted, glorified, and also with the exact meaning of what it says, your, this corrupted is made incorruptible, forgiven, expiated of all fleshly sin. So that was pretty amazing as I looked at that, and that's exactly what 1 Corinthians 15, 51 teaches us. And, and so now with that word harpazo, the deeper meaning, it, 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 even with one word, it meant the exact same thing. Harpazo meaning taken up and forgiven. At the very moment, taken out of the body of sin and the flesh to a glorified, unsinned body. So, now here we are in Matthew 24. And, then we, and this is what everybody wants to do. They want to place, and he says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. I want you to think of the language here. Think of John the Baptist when Jesus, they had the Pharisees and the scribes sent to the temple to pre and wonder what John was doing. Why is he baptizing people? And they're asking him all kinds of questions and he's explaining in Matthew. He says, I, in Matthew 3, 11, he says, I baptize with the baptism of water, but he that is preferred of me, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, but he also looks at him in John, he says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Most Christians look at that as John was announcing that Jesus Christ was going to die for their sins and be buried and rose again. And you ask any Christian, they'll tell you that's what they think. And that's what 99% of Christians think. They should have ganged up on him and got him right there. If, if you're going to get your sins forgiven right there. No, this is what he's referring to. 
Jesus Christ is going to take the sin of the world away. You go back to Matthew 3.11, like I just said. How's he going to do that? With the baptism of fire. This whole world is going to burn. That's what Matthew 24 is about. There will be some survivors. This is, again, going to lift Israel as the number one nation again. This is bringing them back to the promise of Exodus 19.6. They will be a kingdom of priests. They will be servants of God, and they'll be Gentiles survive, and they must come worship God. I'm kind of throwing a lot in a nutshell here. This has nothing to do with rapture. This is an earthly kingdom. That's what he's referring to. He took them all away. So, also shall the son of, coming of the Son of Man be, then shall be two in the field, one shall be taken. Now, the Lord, most people want to look at that and say, ah, oh, see right there? They're taken to heaven in the glory. There's the rapture. The whole context is destruction. We're going to clarify a little better in Luke 17. I'm going to let you read that. And it says, And the other one shall be taken, the other one left. Two women in the grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other one left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord cometh. Now, when Paul describes the rapture, after he tells us this, he says, you're going to meet the Lord in the air, so shall you ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The, the Lord leaves uh, three parables here. Amen. A stern warning to the Jews. You know not what hour I'm coming to do these things, so you better not act like a fool and be a sinner. Don't get drunk. The, the, it gives you the parable of the ten virgins, and so on. And uh, there's nothing, no language in here about comfort anybody. He's telling these Jews they better be watching. And we in the body of Christ, it's, it's no less the principle of God. If we put our faith in Christ, we're ready to be with Him in heaven. But yeah. what are we doing with that grace? But let's go to Luke 17. If you got a Bible, jump there. Because a lot of people are going to be swell up in anger right there. They're just going to say, you don't know what you're talking about, even though I just read it. It's, yeah, the context is... Context there. determines the whole, the tribulation people. They, they are being taken the same way the people in the flood were taken. Amen. <laughs> and that wasn't, that wasn't these, glory. <laughs> these people that were killed in the flood were not taken into glory in heaven. I'll tell you that right now. These, you better go read... Uh, Genesis chapter 6, if you really think that, because uh, this is what the world is coming to, and that's why the Lord referenced it back to as it was in the days of Noah. He's going to clean. He's going to take away the sin of the world. Now, we are, we are forgiven our sin when we put our faith in Jesus, but eventually the Lord is going to physically take away the sin of the world on those, and, and I'm, I'm going to use a verse that somebody left me that I don't understand. They took it out of God. Did. For them that chose not the love of God in the Second Thessalonians in chapter 2, that they might be saved. They didn't believe the gospel. That's who he's talking to. Those people that are, did not go in the rapture, they refused grace. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in the next video about the ones that have died in Christ. Because I was mentioned this is a time of testing. We've got 2,000 years of saints that have died in Christ. And uh, the Lord makes it clear they're safe in Christ. That was, that was what he talked about. Their hearts should not worry. When this event happens, they're going. And, said, and these people try to wiggle in the, the, the room that the, that the people that are left here. This is a time of your big testing. Well, our test is we believe by faith. We believe by the word of God, Jesus Christ is who he says he is. He died for our sins, and that's our qualifier. But there's not a time of testing for the for the body of Christ. We'll go ahead and read Luke 17, verses, uh, start at 26, because we're running, we're already at 34 minutes, and I'm going to try to wrap this up very quickly. 17, 26. 26. This is the exact same language as Matthew 24, 36. Yeah. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, 
They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Stop right there. There's what people, you know, when you see people look at Matthew 24, the Lord didn't even write that down. They try to wiggle it, one taken one. This is the proper context. The flood destroyed them all, did not take them away in glory in heaven. Uh, and and those are not comforting words for these people right here, I'll tell you that. And uh, I, like I said, there's people that they're going to adhere that they're somehow part of this program. They will not see that the Lord gave the Apostle Paul mysteries of us for us, even though I read it as clearly as I could. And I'm praying that people that have never heard these things look at those things. And there's much, much more we're going to get into. But just by those words alone that we read right out of the Bible, how many of you people have ever taken those things in and said, have I ever looked at this? Right? Did I ever read these words and say, what did the Lord mean that he gave Apostle Paul, that which was not made known to the sons of man, but now? Well, but now meant but now. And you have to do a little study. When was Paul saved? About seven years after Christ's uh, ascension into heaven. So then he really didn't start preaching to the Gentiles until about 17 years. So there's a long period of time in there that the Lord was working with Apostle Paul, giving him revelations. Then he began the churches in the Gentile world, revealing these mysteries to us. So I want you to pray about that. I would, I, you know, I would love to keep going. And you know what? Let Let's just sign off here. And if if the Lord leads us, we'll just go on and do part two while we're here because I feel part like three. part three. Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, let's do that. And we. And like I said, there's a lot of people, if you don't agree with what we said, if you, if you don't agree with God, you know, uh, even if you don't believe in the rapture and the prostrate, we haven't even dealt with that when it happens. Remember, there's people out there searching for truth. I'm trying to just read it directly out of the Bible and in context to the body. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm more than satisfied that I know the, our destination and we haven't even that might touch on that in the next video yeah, I realize where that, our destination is I realize we're heaven. two vi videos into this and haven't really got into a time frame yet and, you know we keep citing this video about pre-trib and, and we haven't touched on why we think that yet but right. this has kind of all been setting up and, and you really got to understand a lot of things before we even get into that. So. <laughs> but if these people, if, if people out there don't see the difference between Christ's earthly ministry and Paul's revealed mystery to us, basically it's, good. it's a prophetic program, prophesied, and then a revealed mystery program. Well, there is, uh, you'll always have confusion. And that's what I've learned as, as I've studied this. When you can do that, look at what was given to us as, as a mystery secret, as because it says so, not because I'm trying to preach something that's heretical. Uh, you will always have confusion. And uh, look, just pray about these things. We love all the uh, the people that uh, watch these things, and, we, and we, we really love everybody that's even trying. And if, if they want to just watch so they can pick something about that we might have an error, I'll be glad to do it, but so far I've just got some language of teaching bad stuff and no scripture. So I appreciate all the scripture you give me to refute what the Lord says, because that's all I'm doing in reading. I've got some people telling me we're teaching bad teachings, but no scripture. So if you're going to do these things, give me scripture. God bless. All right. uh, Look forward to uh, the next part. And if you haven't seen the first one, uh, be sure to watch it. Uh, link will be in the description box. All right, God bless.